Good day, ladies and gents. Just a quick note before this video begins. When I recorded it, I recorded this completely live with integrated uh, microphone and audio from the software. So the music does get incredibly loud to the point where you can't hear me uh, during parts of this video. I apologize for that, but I've decided to show the video anyway. Um, I didn't say anything too important in there, I don't think. Now, the reason why I have the volume up so loud and I didn't just turn it off while I was making this video is I'm constantly listening to the audio cues in the soundtrack why I'm editing the video in a completely different spot so I can work out how to edit the next part of the video. So what you're seeing is me actually working. I'm not putting this on. This is a live recording of me actually building a video. So anyways, brace yourself for some loud music when I actually start playing the file if the musical track is active. Again, apologies for it, but I think the video should be interesting enough and answer a few of your questions. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy. G'day ladies and gents, and welcome to Behind the Scenes with Mags. So, today I'm still technically on holidays as I record this at the moment, but I've got a lot of questions over the last year or so on exactly how I edit my videos together, or a few people asking if I can show you what I actually do to put together a video that you watch on the channel. And most recently this popped up after a brief discussion I had in one of my videos that I did before I went on holidays, talking about the sort of editing that goes into one of my DCS videos, and a few people were curious on exactly how I put it together. Was wasn't what I intended to be my first video coming back, but I'm still working on the video. Well, I'm just starting to work on the video that was going to be my return video. So this is actually really weird. I've got uh, videoception going on here because I'm doing a video on sh doing a video, making a video on the video that I'm actually going to show you, if that makes sense. So anyways, I'm going to show you what goes into a DCS video. I'm going to start from scratch and I'm going to cut bits and pieces here and there as I progress through. So this is where I start from. I use Sony Vegas for the most part. I've recently started practicing with Premiere, but Vegas is very, pardon me, Vegas is very user-friendly to actually use. So what you're seeing here is the video tracks. We have video and audio tracks for two separate recordings. Now, this is after I've flown the flight itself and I've recorded the entire flight out. In fact, if I zoom out here, you can see there is almost an hour and a half of footage on the main video that shows my actual flyout. So, yeah, this is an hour and a half video. Now, as my DCS videos are usually only about 20 to 30 minutes long, I basically have to edit straight up. I know I have to edit an hour's worth of footage out of this while still keeping a coherent video. So I've got to cut the entire thing down to just being that long. All of this needs to be cycled down with any areas where nothing interesting is happening uh, go out. So a lot of the navigation flight between waypoints is going to be cut down. Now this is a really interesting video because this is just my perspective. The top track is, as you can see, the live feed from why I was flying. So if I hit play here, you can see the actual flight. Incidentally, this is why occasionally I get aircraft names wrong when I'm calling them out in my videos. A lot of the time, this little screen is all I'm actually looking at while I'm recording commentary. So that's that feed. Now, if I turn that off, you can see I have the feed from the outside of the aircraft. So we've got the live footage from inside the cockpit, and then we have the replay footage showing the external view. So the first thing I need to do is I need to sync these two files together. This is simple enough. You'll notice they're approximately the same length. The bottom one is slightly shorter. That's because I cut it off before I actually made it back to the hangar. So what we do is we go into the start. We want to zoom right in. We're going to play through the first track from beginning. And we're looking for the moment that I actually... There. That's the piece that I'm looking for. Stop. Right there. So the hangar door's opening. So we're going to film... Just strip this back until the moment that the hangar doors start to crack. Go back a little bit further, right there. And we're going to cut and delete the first section. Now we're going to watch the second section at the same time. Right there is the part where the hangar doors start to crack. We zoom it back or rewind it back. We want just the moment the doors crack and they're going to split. Now this isn't perfect, I'm going to have to do some fine tuning in between, but in theory, if I put both of these back to the same point, I should be able to hit play now, and then turn off the feed in the top one, and as you can see, they're not quite lined up, so I'll do a little trimming 
to get these two synchronized. Now, once these two videos are done, a good cue to actually work off as well is the audio files. So I can see the audio files in this section are out of alignment. So what I want to do on the bottom one is trim this back quite a bit. And then we want to zoom back in on that point and bring the lower file just forward so the audio feeds from both mix. And then we extend this track back forward and I should be able to go play. All right, and I should be able to go play. And you can see the tracks are synchronized between the two. So I, I have to do a little bit of tinkering here just to get the two tracks to run at the same time. Once I've done that, the internal and external views are synchronized and I can cut freely between them as I wish to from these two feeds, showing internal and external views on the aircraft. Now this is just for me. The mission that I am, well, the video that I am going to make out of these two files is actually significantly more complex than this. This is an A-10 mission, obviously. I'm flying the A-10 Warthog, but it is a, I suppose, a combined operations mission. You fly the A-10 on ground attack, and you're going to be attacking a base that is in the mountains, controlled by insurgents. However, that base is defended by SAM sites, and obviously you can't send the A-10 in there first, so there is a flight of tornadoes for those who have seen... Might have been watching my social media. I posted a few photos of some tornadoes from DCS the other day. Well, those aircraft are actually flying a seed mission for this particular mission and will come in and destroy the SAM sites. So I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to do it this way yet, but if I do, I'm going to have to add a third video, which will show the perspective of the tornadoes performing their mission. But that's not where the mission ends. There is also a flight of Blackhawks that are going to land once the air defences at the insurgent camp have been eliminated. So I have to cut in their perspective for as they come in for the landing. There is also a recon helicopter in the mission that is operating as mission control and liaison between each of the elements inside of the attack. And it has its own perspective. It's running recon. It is giving you all the information on the number of units that are in the area. So I have to put a feed from it at the appropriate times when it's communicating. I'm not sure if I'm going to go that complex with it yet. As you can see, I've only just started making the video. For the moment, I'm just going to edit together my perspective on the whole thing, and then I will decide afterwards whether or not to edit in these extra elements at appropriate times and do more of a movie than a commentary. But haven't made that choice yet. So no, this is just the basic part at the start. Get the two files to talk to one another so I can freely be flying along from the inside cockpit view, and then can cut out and go straight to the external shot showing the plane from the outside in a particular moment and then cut back into the com uh, cockpit at will and have both perspectives running simultaneously. This gives me editing control over the video. So I'm going to kill this one now and I'm going to come back in a couple of minutes after I've done some editing near the start. Okay, so we're about half an hour, 45 minutes into the editing at this point. As you can see, I've already shrunk 20 minutes out of the video. Most of this was through the startup procedures got rid of most of that and you can see I've done a little bit of work here at the beginning now like most of my more cinematic videos I've been doing with DCS this one is going to start up with a basically a two minute intro running to a musical track I did one on the MiG-23 not that long ago where I started off with some traditional Russian folk music at the start as the MiG-23 was getting around to the runway before I begun I'm going to do exactly the same thing here with the A-10 but I've gone for a more rocky uh, American southern rock sort of a, uh, a sound, which you'll hear in just a moment. Now, I've tinkered around with the editing and got them synchronized even better. Once these two files are synchronized, mind you, you can see we've shortened off and we've cut sections out. Once the synchronization is complete, at any point that I cut one video, I have to cut both videos at exactly the same time, so I can at exactly the same location, so I can maintain synchronization the whole way through the video. Now... The reason why I do the sort of the musical intros and stuff along those lines and we'll do less of a tutorial here, it is largely in regards to my lack of confidence with certain aircraft. I'm Some aircraft in DCS I'm completely comfortable with. I can do the Hawk without any issues whatsoever. I'm completely comfortable inside of the Huey. I'm rapidly becoming very comfortable inside of the M2000. The A10 is one of the most complicated modules in DCS. So I have a basic competency and that's about it. I don't want to do a tutorial style video on the A10C because I don't think I'm good enough and I don't want to teach anyone any bad habits. So better to make an interesting video than something that could be taken as a tutorial and potentially 
mess people up. But as you can see, there's a bit of editing going on in here at the moment. So, explain what we've got. So we have a short clip at the start, as you can see here, and that's the hangar doors opening. And then we've just got a black block that is blended with a bunch of still images at the start. Now I might am animate these so they move slightly. I've done that before, but as you can see, I've got me channel logo here because this is going to serve as my intro there won't actually be a standard mags intro at the start of this video then we've got you know, dcs world game that's playing a10c and warthog and the way it plays through i'll just run a playthrough for you from start <laughs> We slip through the start and I've used, a lot of people use various software to try and get the cuts organized. Um, I used to be a DJ, so I'm fairly used to playing with audio files. The way I've done it is I just watch the waveform itself in the video editing and use that to synchronize my cuts. Um, and do it mostly by ear to make it work. Occasionally I will mess it up and this is because the more information that's loaded into your editing software, you can occasionally get lags between the video you're seeing and the audio you're hearing. The audio is almost always on point. The video can sometimes jerk around a little bit, which you may notice at some points in this video. That's hard to get around because it comes down to system resources. Uh, incidentally, for those wondering, why do you have 64 gig of RAM in your computer? Well, part of it is because I was learning and still sort of am learning 3D animation. Part of it is because of this. The combined total of these two videos alone to do it, the editing, total outs at 25 gig, just from these two perspectives. As I start ed adding more video to the feed, this is going to blow out. If I throw all the points of view from the tornadoes and everything else into this editing software, I'm gonna be loading up near 40 or 50 gig at some point. And that's, that's what it's there for. I have a few programs running in the background that allow things like Vegas to be able to utilize this RAM. It was a pain in the ass to set up. Sometimes it causes crashes but it allows me to get most of this in memory and get it running as smooth as possible. So, anyways, we'll run this through one more time. You get used to having to do this often. So the cuts look good there, but it cuts straight to the cockpit, which is not what I want to do. However, I don't want to edit anything here at this point. So, to show how it's actually going to play, we'll drop the transparency down, and as it goes through these jump cuts, and it's not going to play through smooth. So I'm going to have to start it right from this point. This is a... Sorry, my pet ferret is running around making noise in the background. This is just a smooth transition from black through to the actual video footage, which should show a nice fade. You can see it's a little bit jerky there, but you get the idea. And it shows the A10 rolling out of the hand. Now, at this point, and this is why you keep the file synchronized, as the A10 clears the corner, I want to show a shot from inside of the cockpit. So from about, we'll let it tinker through to about here, the cockpit is starting to vanish. We'll go back just a touch. And we're going to cut. And we're going to cut. Now at this point, I'm going to turn off the bottom feed. And we're going to delete that completely. So this is our new starting point. Now from in here, is not showing correctly. Ah, of course not, because I've got my fade down too low. Now yeah, the fun of editing software. So, you won't see the bottom track now. It's going to cut in the actual cockpit turn. So we want to run this through, and we're listening to the audio cue here at the moment. Alright, so that point there, we've completed the turn, and we're going to cut this here delete the bottom track, and then move this video completely down. We zoom in on it to make sure our lead and our exit are synchronized. And then we're going to turn the fade back off on the top track and see how this goes. So we're going to play this through from here, and this should play through from the start again. My apologies for that. I messed that up completely. Let's try that one more time. Take it from the top. Eternal. 
All right, now the external here is useless, so we're going to do some editing, because you don't want to see the tail of an A10 just disappearing. However, if we kill the audio track here for the moment, and we're going to kill the top track completely, we can turn the fade back up, otherwise I'll mess that up again. Now we want to watch this track here. Now you'll be able to see, I jerk around a lot with the camera here. This is the cut that goes on in between what you are actually seeing in the video. Now the reason why I've got to do this live is because if I pause to move the camera, it messes up the synchronization. So what I'm trying to do is at this point here. Now I've got to watch it through. About there. Now I think I did two passes on this. So I want to cut it from here. Now at this point we're going to split here and here. Delete that feed and delete that feed entirely. Now we're going to move these forward. Bring the other one right up. Alright. That keeps those two together. Keep the top track shut off. Now if we play through, we'll turn this one back on for a second, and what this will look like, if we play it from the start again, actually, we'll pause that, we turn the audio back on for this, and we'll see whether or not we can get what we're trying to achieve. <laughs> Why did that? So we'll just play it from here just one more time. Just make sure the audio cues are working. Now at that point in the audio cue, we're just going to listen to it again. And we want to cut because the truck and the camera are about to rapidly come out of alignment here again in a second. So we can delete that section of the video. Now we want to turn this one back on and we watch again. Actually, one thing I am going to have to do, we'll select, zoom right out for the moment. I just noticed something that I forgot to do that can potentially cause a problem. All right, right click, switches, and we want to disable resample. And it's not going to let us. Okay, so we're going to do it the hard way then. These two. Disable resample. And then we're going to take this entire video line. Resampling is basically the rendering software going back, trying to smooth out the image. Ah, edit. Undo, I don't want to split there. Um, trying to smooth out the video footage when... By, by resampling the video and layering it over itself to make a smooth transition, but it can create a double image. Now, I'm working with video that was recorded at 100 frames per second, and because I only upload 30 to my channel, I don't need to resample. I have more than enough frames to keep a smooth video running. Um, the upside is when my, uh, my internet gets updated, I can also transition straight over to 60 FPS if I want to, and I don't need to change anything on this end because I'm already recording at 100 or over 60 at the very least, so it doesn't matter. So we go back to here. Now the resample's out. Now this one always plays above this track, so this should jump straight back to the cockpit without question. Plays through. over the left and there's the UAV with two guards on it. Now, this point is actually taking a little bit too long. So, from here, I want to already be panning up a look at the UAV, which I'm starting to at this point. So, we cut it again, and we're going to edit out a couple more seconds worth of footage. Again, bring them back up and realign. Now from this point, now you'll notice there's always a bit of a jerk as 
we transition from one video to the other. That's not something that's going into the video, that's because the computer is struggling to jump between two extremely large video files in memory simultaneously, and it takes a bit of work. So if we start right from the start, and get a smooth hand over. And that's gonna to go too long, so we gotta pick a point. So if we cut it there, and there again. Now at this point, we're gonna delete the A10 footage from below. Drop the video and the audio file out and make sure they have replaced just nicely. And then we go back over here and we're gonna turn the top track off again. And you'll see, play through here, once again, I'm moving the camera like this. So why the A10 is still rolling, and I want about there. We're going to split and split again. This entire bottom section and top section get deleted and we bring the entire audio file up again. And you can see we're starting to track minutes out. Now mind you, everything you've watched so far, and this is for those who are oh, people who do stuff on YouTube, you, you don't actually do any work. We've been going for what, about 10 minutes so far, give or take. This is 21 seconds into the video. This is how much editing work I've already had to do to get these shots to transition, and we're not even half a minute into the video at this point. So, this should transfer over. Pans over into the A10 roll. And at this point, now I might end up doing some clean cutting here as well, but I'll look at that later on. So we're gonna keep this, delete that file, and then we're going to turn on and have a look at this point. So we're going to follow, 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 follow. And we're going to the start of the turn, which is about here. So we're going to delete these two sections. Once again, roll them up. Cut it about here. Actually, if I won't cut it just yet, turn off the top feed. I don't end up getting a shot from there. I wasn't fast enough. The goal there, I was trying to get a shot from the top of the APC as we clear the corner. This probably won't go for the whole two minutes because going further up, and I'm going to leave that there because that's the editing that goes into just. 30 seconds. Now this becomes a little bit more simple as you go further down the video because the shots become longer, but this same thing is going on the whole way through. And this is just from two points of perspective, inside the cockpit and the external view. Once you start going, adding additional aircraft, I'm then cutting between these two shots, shots from my wingman, shots from the Blackhawks that are in this mission, shots from the Tornadoes that are in this mission, shots from the recon helicopter that is in this mission. And these all tie together. But the end point that we're after here, I think I got a decent shot from the Huey as well. Um, the end shot we're after, if we go further through, turn on the lead is up here. And this is where I'm going to actually start the video just as I arrive. Wait a second, there we go. And I had to go through during the startup, I forgot to completely configure my uh, countermeasure system. So I had to make some adjustments here to flick through the controls and set the countermeasure up. So this is about the point that I want to end and actually start the video proper rather than the introduction. So this will probably not make the whole thing. And I may not end up using this music yet, which will force me to re-edit the entire start, although I'm pretty impressed and happy with how it goes so far. The music is copyright free, by the way, so I can use it in these sort of videos. These came from Epidemic Sound, provided this audio. And at this point, we start editing the rest of the video together. Now this will take, when I'm not making a video about me making a video, this will take hours, at least. We are looking at 
once I start cutting video down just to get these two files synchronized there's probably four hours of editing here just to get this section down to the right length at that point I'm going to work out exactly what footage I need and I'll have to go back into DCS and record the Typhoon perspective and the others if I choose to use them and at that point those video files which will be much shorter and I'll be able to move them around will get brought back to this video to the editing software and they will get added as an addition to cut back and forth and all of this is just to get the video the way I like it before we even start considering recording a commentary and at that point I have a, a lot of deciding exactly how to do the commentary for the video do I go into details about the mission because I'm not doing a tutorial on this I'm not comfortable enough with the A10 so do I do a brief overview of what I'm doing with individual systems or what systems I'm tinkering with do and what I'm trying to get them to do or do I actually not do a commentary at all and I cut this mission right down and just use the audio the voiceover audio from the communications which you should be able to hear in just a moment um, there's a section coming up Actually, that's right. Some of these audios are silent, so I won't be able to do that. Well, actually, that's something to consider, whether or not I actually get a few people in and we record the dialogue between the different aircraft ourselves, and then I edit that in at the appropriate points that the discussions are taking place as well in order to create basically a 30-minute movie of this mission. I can go that route. I have decisions to make once I've started the editing down. But this is just a brief look at what it goes into just getting 30 seconds worth of video to do what I want it to do. And so far what we've got is this. Actually, we'll stop that. Restart the audio. And this is what you get just for, well, this isn't even the complete intro, but just the start. <laughs> And just watching it through again, I'm thinking it might almost be worth, since this shot is running so long, half the length of the shot, and then potentially do cut in a shot of the typhoons, uh, not the typhoons, the um, tornadoes. If I remember correctly, at this point in the mission, they have just taken off and they're forming up, heading towards the mission zone, getting ready to run seed ops. So I could potentially cut in a shot either of that, or there is also predator drones operating in the mission as well that don't do anything they're just flying around so I can potentially cut to a shot of one of the predator drones in air but that's something else that I could do just to flick right away from the A-10 on the intro but anyways ladies and gents I hope you found this an interesting view at what goes into just a few seconds of a video like what I do with eight uh, with DCS and I do similar editing on a lot of my videos uh, the average editing time for a video even something as simple as War Thunder and War Thunder videos are by far the easiest videos that I edit together and just the editing on those can take two hours to get the video to do exactly what I want it to do before I even consider the commentary there can be yeah two hours there depending on the length of the mission what plane I'm using and how what angles and shots that I want to show. Although most of the War Thunder stuff, once I've done the initial editing at the start and the end, tends to run in a single video of live recorded unedited content. Although I'm thinking about changing that and doing this style of video with War Thunder as well, but there's more decisions to make and it depends on how much the War Thunder replay system wants to play. But again, we'll, we'll try and end this one up. I hope you enjoyed this brief look at how the A10 video is edited together and how I edit together my videos, the kind of work that goes into them. Click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.